Okay, um, welcome, good morning once again. And uh, just wanted to um, read from John chapter 14. Um, was um, yeah, was was sixteen, fifteen, sixteen, right? And um, just talks about um, the the Lord teaching about the Holy Spirit. Like, uh, let me just read a few verses here. Verse sixteen says, "And I pray the Father, and He will gi He will give you another Helper, that He may abide with you forever." Uh, verse 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Okay, And um, just want us to go down um, to yeah. okay. you just go down to uh, another verse which is um, uh, Verses verse 25 and 26, 26, right? But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you, right? And um, and, and these, the Lord is talking about um, the, the, the Holy Spirit whom he's going to send, like during his earthly ministry, he's saying, okay, um, now I'm I'm going to go, but if I don't go, then you know. In other words, he's saying if I if I go, then we will send the 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 Holy Spirit, the Helper, who will be with you, who will remain with you forever, right? And uh, and it's amazing um, when you think about it. Here is the Lord, you know, spending this time with the disciples, and he's saying that yeah, I've spent this time with you. I've talked to you. I've showed you many things. You know, uh, you learned a lot. But I'm going, okay. And I'm sure the disciples would have been like, Lord, you know, a lot of trouble, right? Uh, if you even if we read, um, um, you know, verses, uh, sorry, chapters 15, chapter 16, chapter 17, etc. You see that, okay, um, the people, the disciples were uh, troubled. 14, especially, you know, verse one, he says, "Let your heart not be troubled," which means that. You know, he saw that people were troubled, that he was talking about him going. But he's saying, the Lord is saying, you know, it is to your advantage that I'm going because I'm going to send the helper. Okay, so, you know, many times we think, right, um, Lord, if, if only you were here, right? Lord, uh, if Jesus was here physically, it will be great. And if he's just sitting next to me, he's talking to me, how wonderful it will be, we think. And that's what the disciples were also were thinking. And I'm, and today, you know, I'm sure that all, that is all something that we think also, saying that, Lord, if you were here speaking to me face to face, how wonderful that will be. But the Lord is saying, you know, I'm going that I might send another helper and he will be with you forever. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He will remain with you. He will be with you forever. He will teach. He will remind. He will lead you into truth. He will be with you forever. You know. So I was so excited just thinking about it, saying, Lord, you're actually saying that the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, in a way, you know, he's saying that it's even greater. Than his physical presence, you know. I don't know if I can even say that, <laughs> right? But I'm just thinking, you know, my my opinion. I'm saying the Lord is saying, okay, it's to your advantage, it's to your benefit, because the Holy Spirit will come and He'll remain with you, stay with you wherever you are, where, whatever you know you're going through. He's going to be with you. He's going to teach you. He's going to remind you. He's going to draw you, warn you, right? He's saying He's going to be with you 24/7, and 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 here we are. We sometimes we think, oh, uh, I wish I had, you know, that face to face. But he's saying, hey, I'm giving you something. This great treasure, the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, who's in you, right? 
So, so I, this morning I was just listening to this verse and being shared, and I was just, as I was driving, I was just thinking, God, what an amazing, what an amazing perspective that you're saying that I'm going, but then I'm sending, and and it's it's to our advantage that you're sending this Holy Spirit to fellowship with, to commune with, to learn from, to be led through life's journey, right? So, um, yeah, why don't we just pray and say, Lord, we, uh, we just want to commit, surrender, yield um, to the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? And we just say, Lord, uh, just open, my, open our eyes and open our ears to get a fresh, fresh perspective of the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life, right? Father, we, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that we have the comforter, that we have the helper. We have the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And Lord, Father God, what an awesome privilege to host the presence of the living God. Lord, that you, cho you choose to tabernacle with us, that you choose to inhabit us and dwell with us, God. We thank you, Father God. Lord, we, we pray, may this change us from the inside out. Lord, may this change us. Yes, Lord, we are no longer orphans. We are no longer alone. We are no longer, oh God, without, Lord, any help or wisdom. or uh, Lord, uh, we are no longer like that, God, because you, the God of heaven and earth, is with us. And Lord, I pray that for each one of us that let there be a fresh understanding, a fresh revelation of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, Master. Lord, for it is to our advantage, Lord, that you went and you sent. And Master, I pray that we'll continue to walk, Lord, with this knowledge and understanding and may it be a reality, Lord, let our life change, Father God, the way we see things, the way we do things, our conversations and everything. Lord, let there be a marked difference and transformation, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise this morning. In Jesus' master's name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, so Christian leadership, we've been looking at... Um, Guidelines for planning. We looked at daring to dream, right? So um, I think all everything is all interlinked. I was I was just thinking that inner wholeness, Christian leadership is inner linking and or interlinked, you know, because if you are made whole, then you dare to dream, right? Um, because if if we are hurting, then we are you know inhibiting, inhibited, and uh, not really daring to dream. Okay. So yeah, so he's able to do much more than we ask a thing. So you know, dream big, and in all that dreaming, let God be part of it, right? In all our dreaming, in all our planning. You know, you say dream, you're saying okay, um, think big. You know, go beyond uh, uh, what what we are capable of. You know, uh, in, in our planning and so on. So dream big, but involve God in it. Involve the Lord in it, right? Okay. This then the next one. If we look at we are what are we looking at? We're looking at planning, right? Uh, some of the tips, uh, you know, how the ways we could go about this well, do this well. Um, so the next thing that we see is it seems opposite of daring to dream, which means be realistic and be practical. Okay, so I just want to ask us this question. You know, it is is being practical opposite of being spiritual. Or have people told you, you know, you just go opposite of being full of faith? Sometimes. <laughs> so what does practical mean? Logic and science. Uh, backup plan. In case faith doesn't work, <laughs> works will work. <laughs> wow. So practical is um, something that is workable, right? So we're saying, OK, um, is this really, in practice, is it possible? Okay, That's what we're saying, right? Is this practically possible? You know, 
we can have a lot of theory we can have a lot of wonderful you know discussions but in life will this really work at the end of it all you know that's the thing um, so that's being practical but have you you know sometimes we 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 think that you know being a person of faith is being not being practical or being a visionary is not being practical so having these lofty dreams and ideals is not being practical right but actually it, it's not opposite you know if you look at proverbs the book of proverbs right if you look at if you go through those uh, chapters what is it about what is it about practical wisdom day to day right that is what it is covering all aspects of life you know if you pick any verse you know it's it's so practical it's so down to earth i'm i'm i've just turned to proverbs 15 and verse 1 a soft answer turns away wrath but a harsh tongue stirs up anger the tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness right so very practical right at the same time is it spiritual yeah it's the word of god right um so so the thing is that um, practical and spiritual need not contradict you know need not contradict each other okay so it's not contradictory it's just that you know when i'm thinking when i'm dreaming you know is it grounded is it workable okay uh, i'm sure you've um, uh, read that book by pastor ashish you know being heavenly minded and earthly wise right so which means that we yeah we need to be heavenly minded we are living in two different realities right we are seated with him in the heavenly places at the same time you know uh, on, on earth as well living our, living out our physical life here so we we are have access to two realities two realms the spiritual realm and the physical realm right that is with we, in our spirit with our spiritual realm we access the, you know the spiritual realm and and uh, you know the whatever is there the gifts and everything which is part of the spiritual realm and we access by faith at the same time we walk on the earth right in the physical natural realm so we have this privilege of doing that right so uh, one of the thing so the thing is when it comes to planning when we say pre- be practical it doesn't mean that i'm not spirit led or we should not be you know people of faith etc right ephesians 5 Verses 15 to 17. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. You know, you see the whole thing, right? Saying the will of the Lord: be wise, walk circumspectly. Meaning, be careful, redeem the time, don't waste time, right? I'm saying, understand what the will of the Lord is. right so will of the lord his word his ways right so um so just wanted to share that right so uh, being practical doesn't mean that it's opposite of faith or opposite of uh, being spiritual right okay so you let's look at some quickly go through some of these practical tips right um or planning hacks if you want to call it that right okay so start with what you have okay so many times we are waiting constantly waiting for that big thing to happen or you know big thing or big uh, whatever resources to come around etc and we never get started so start with what you have uh, do not take on more than what you can handle okay so you are maybe in that season we, we we thought about season right maybe you are in that season and we have certain responsibilities which go with the season so considering all that don't take on more than what you can handle does that mean that i cannot stretch does that mean i cannot put in more effort right so it's it's talking about stretching and putting in an effort with all that don't take on more than what you can and right so yes when we stretch we are capable of much more sometimes we you know we we downplay or we are not even aware of our uh, full abilities and potential but at the same time there are we know that humanly there are limits we get exhausted you know our energy is limited right our strength yes we are capable of a lot but it's limited we need times of rest refreshing recuperation right so with all that 
with all the stretch, with all the efforts, don't take on more than more than what you can handle. Okay. Um, gather information about the task at hand. Okay, when you're planning for maybe it's something that maybe it's a church plant, maybe it's something that you want to take up, some project, some some something that you want to organize, some outreach. Find out information. There's always enough and more, right? There are a lot of resources. So gather information. Uh, Proverbs 13, 16 says, every prudent man acts with knowledge, right? So knowledge is information that you put together that is processed, but a fool lays open his folly. Okay. Next one, you will not know everything. And that's that's true, right? So I we sometimes wish we had more information or more knowledge or you know more things about what will happen in the days ahead and and all that but we will not have full information right um, so there is there seems to be that gap somewhere we need to step off right the the steps or the path seems to end now it's not laid out anymore right so go with that plan with what we you do know and um, and and step forward Right, Proverbs twenty twenty four. The a man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? Right. Uh, so that which means that the Lord is ordering, ordaining the steps. And uh, sometimes, yes, it seems as if we don't know enough. Right. I wish that these steps would be revealed. The five steps or ten steps ahead will be revealed, but uh, it's not. But then go with what you have. Okay. Then don't be in a hurry take things one step at a time okay sometimes we want to uh, fast forward things um, and, and just it doesn't work right at, at the same time i just want to say that don't delay also right sometimes we we delay unnecessarily delay waiting for things to happen and uh, we we end up not taking a step right so don't be in a hurry same time you know um, don't delay unnecessarily or postpone things, right? Then the next one is know your priorities. Know what needs to be done first okay, in all this planning and um, you know what is the sequence of things, what is of the highest importance that needs to be addressed. Okay? Uh, Proverbs 24-7, um, in a great insight, says prepare your outside work, make it fit for yourself in the field, and afterward build your house. It's talking about the order, talking about the priority and importance. Prepare some, no, prepare the outside work first. Um, write things down. Okay, how many of us are in the habit of writing or in the habit of just knowing that my mind is there? You know, I can remember everything. Write that. I, I won't follow. <laughs> okay, okay. Mm. So that's that's about that's the next thing, uh, next point, uh, you know, that we need to look at. But um, yeah, the thing is to to write down because we uh, we forget, right? We forget some of the things. It's good to uh, when I say write down, it's good to record somewhere. Maybe it's a voice note, uh, maybe it's something digital that you you know type in and you know save. Uh, but uh, you know, file it away, save it, document. Um, maybe you know out of the ten things, sometimes we forget that those two important things, right? That you thought of, and then because we've not made a note of it, we forget, right? So document it. Um, communicate the plan. You know, if it involves people, other people, communicate the plan so that everybody knows that this is what we want to do. Okay. Okay. Um, sixth uh, one about uh, when it comes to planning. Receive godly counsel. Have God speak into your life. You know the thing is that um, we are not alone in this. You know whether it's ministry or work or anything, um, we you know God speaks to people. There are others whom God has blessed or God has taken them through, and and whom you know who can be a big help in our life in our ministry, right? And uh, sometimes God sends these people our way. Right. I remember, like, as a new believer, as a young believer, um, uh, there was this friend who you, who always used to visit my house, and it'll be on a normally it'll be on a Saturday. You know, we'll we'll meet, and and I remember that uh, every time he visits and meets, I'll be I'll be so refreshed in my faith, 
in my walk with God so refreshing because he'll be talking about a lot of testimonies. He'll share a lot of information about what's happening in in the you know what God is doing you know in the city among the youth in the colleges and so you know my faith will be so refreshed. Right. Um, so I remember that every time he comes and speaks, there's there's uh, so much of refreshing. Another person whom God would use in a very, very unusual way is like, I will have questions, I will have gone through some challenges and problems, but and then he would visit and we would talk. And the conversation or the, some of the things that he shares will be exactly the kind of question, answers to the questions that I've been having. Like that whole week, whatever questions that I had or whatever challenges that I had or whatever things that I was struggling with, during the course of the conversation, what he shares will be those answers. So all I'm saying is that God will use, God will use others uh, who have, you know, whom he has prepared, who have, you know, maybe more experience and more knowledge and understanding and wisdom. So we can receive, there's nothing wrong to uh, receive counsel, godly counsel. Right? And uh, Proverbs 11, 14 talks about the importance of receiving that counsel. You know, it says, where there is no counsel or wise um, you know, advice, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Okay, um, And then several other you know, scriptures in Proverbs as well, about correction and about receiving instruction and how plans are established by counsel, Proverbs 20, verse 18. So, so we can always learn from others, but be discerning as well, right? Because, you know, others would share, you know, you know, sometimes people in their sincerity share, this is what you should do, right? And, uh, but the thing is that their situation was different, their experience was different, the factors were different, right? So, so be, you be discerning, you know, does the Spirit of God witness, does the Spirit of God, you know, bring you to a place of agreement? With what they are sharing, be discerning, right? Okay. The seventh one is when it comes to planning, don't be afraid to revise your plan. Okay. Maybe something is not working. Maybe you feel that okay, here is something that is even better, right? Revise your plan. Um, Proverbs sixteen three, commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. You know, a very important verse. When it comes to planning and everything, you know, involving God and committing and submitting, the you know all those ideas and you know um, projects and everything to God. It says, "Commit your works, um, and your thoughts will be established." Verse nine, same chapter. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So, so we are continually being open to the Lord's direction. So we plan. You know, let's say you plan something and you. Put down everything on paper and it looks good, and it's it seems very watertight. You know, give space for the Lord to act on it. Give space for the Lord to move and speak and and make some changes. Right? It could be uh, it could be in several ways. You know, practically it could be maybe uh, I'm just thinking maybe a worship leader, uh, maybe a you know maybe a sermon that you're preparing, maybe an outreach that you're preparing. So many ways, right? Practically, if you if you see, uh, give space for the Lord, right? And if the Lord wants to make some changes, and uh, He's giving some new thoughts and you know some things to be incorporated, do that. Revise that. And uh, maybe the Lord says, "Okay, now is not the time." Uh, you know, be ready to just go with it. Wait, right? Be patient. Okay. Okay, then the next thing, okay, the most important part of planning is not planning itself, but why we are planning. Okay, because some of us very get very excited about planning. Wow, good, good pen, paper. Let's all sit down, you know, get some coffee and get some snacks. Come, come, you know, let's let's plan. Okay, whiteboard, charts, <laughs> and everything. <laughs> but the that is just a journey, right? But the objective is that. We need to work it out. We need to implement the plan. Uh, sorry? How we can? Uh, so. Uh, 
I mean, just use the mic now. Sorry. Um, like so, sometimes we plan for things, uh, we keep our schedules, but we miss them. Like we can't able to do it because of maybe time schedules or because sometimes we are not well at, and because sometimes we just write it, but we can't keep it into action. But what are the things that we can take or the steps we can take in forward to uh, do the work of the plan? To implement it, mm, to work. Yeah. So practical things. So we, we look at a few things. Um, you know, it, it's coming up in our scheduling. Um, so we'll, a few things are there. So. Um, so we look at it, but but I think um, the thing is for us to understand uh, that you know all these lists, all these plans that I make, to have that execution mentality, or I want to do it, okay, and to be aware that all these tasks are going to take time. Sometimes we plan, you know, the day's plan look like as if we have some forty-eight hours in that day. <laughs> right, just put in so many things. It's like, wow! I just want to do this, do this, do this. I want to finish this, and it doesn't happen. So be, you know, huh? <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, you know, it's like how we plan. I, I mean, I used to plan like that for my exams. Right, I'll pl I start some three months back. Three months back, you know, I'll have some twenty days for each subject. Then finally, it becomes one day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then suddenly, even the day before, I'm like thinking, and you know, I think I have time for resting. Maybe I have time to read the story book and you know, all that. And finally, just rushing, right? Um, yeah, so procrastinate, uh, you know, delay. Uh, um, so all these things. So we can. Uh, so we need to understand that one is okay. This these tasks these tasks have some degree of difficulty, and it it takes time. So I'm going to do it. And uh, and and one thing is to uh, time box it, saying that this task that I'm doing, uh, maybe I need to draw this picture. I'm going to take this time. Right, put a limit to it. Start time, end time to it. And then after that, you might because we might have some twenty things to do in a day. Um, you know, let's say for example, and then you time box it, saying that I need to finish it between within this. Give yourself that. Put that pressure. Right? To do it well, to do it, you know, in a in a perfect manner, without mistakes, etc. I need to give this time, so give it you, give it that time, right? And now, since we have our phones and everything, you can actually put the alarms, like right? put a stopwatch, yeah. And then it just rings, and then yeah, stops. And then you need to you need to discipline. We need we need to discipline ourselves to you know move on to the next task, right? Okay, so implementation. Uh, Proverbs 12 verse 11 says, He who tills his land will be satisfied with bread, but he who follows frivolity is devoid of understanding. Okay, So we, you want to do some good research. Okay, And you say, okay, I, I, let me check on YouTube. Okay, You started well okay, on the subject, but by the end of the research, you're looking at some songs, you're watching some songs, you're watching some interesting videos on how to make uh, you know butter chicken or... You know where where did you start <laughs> and where are you finishing, right? So somewhere we just lost. Hey, that's a nice thing. That's a nice thing. So uh, it says that he who follows frivolity uh, is devoid of understanding. In the sense, you know, I want some entertainment. We tell ourselves, hey, I need some rest. I need to be entertained, and then we, you know, we go, uh, we get distracted. Right? Verse twenty-seven. The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting, but diligence is man's precious possession. So, diligence, which means focused effort, um, and uh, you know, being aware of uh, how we spend our time is very important. So, planning is the beginning. We must be diligent to work out the plan. Um, see, also, uh, you know, we plan certain things, and the certain urgent or requirements come up all the time. Okay. And um, we're going to look at that, like how we need to delegate certain things. You know, uh, like for example, if it's possible, okay, certain things we need to do. It's my responsibility. It's our responsibility. You cannot avoid it. Maybe it's something urgent, something very important. So we do it. But if certain things are there, certain demands are there, can that be, you know, shelved so that what you planned to finish? Be done. We need to take a call. We need to decide. 
is it important enough or can i do it later right so the present circumstances you know will always be there there will be always some demands on our time on, on what needs to be done but uh, what needs uh, you know what we should be doing um, be diligent enough to do it okay then the other thing is it's not enough to be busy but to ask ourselves you know am i busy doing what needs to be done or am i busy doing the right thing right because a lot of activity a lot of busyness does not mean that i'm being productive no. i might be busy you know some uh, certain days where goes by where you know, morning till evening i've been busy i've been busy, busy doing a lot of things and i'm thinking you know what did i do actually right and that happens when we either when we have not planned or we have not been careful to check our plan with regard to the time that is just going ahead right so we've been busy we've been doing things uh it's not that we didn't do the important things or whatever but what was planned did not happen did not take place right okay any questions on this about planning so we looked at how planning is not you know it's not the opposite of spiritual like god is a god of plan and order and uh, we looked at certain scriptures also which um, you know which we can misplace scripture which we can we misapply to say that we should not plan but that's not true right um so with regard to worrying with regard to the lord coming back and and you know so on so we see that god is a god of plan uh he does what he purposes and so on so we have him as our example and we be very effective right when we plan things okay okay to so no questions i think at all okay so let's move on to another aspect so um which is organizing okay planning organizing right so we we looked at vision we looked at mission we looked at goals objectives and plans to achieve these goals um so when it comes to organizing you know this is also part of executing the vision or fulfilling the vision right um so we need to organize what does organize mean to keep in order to arrange to put in place right uh simple things that come to my mind is you know our clothes right uh at home you know do we uh, are we organized as personally are we organized you know to find some things are we do we spend some 15 minutes just searching right if you want to find keys if you want to find your phone if you want to find you know are you constantly searching or do you find it easily right so uh, you know if you are organized then there is a set place for the set for the things right so we know okay this goes here this goes there and uh, and so easy retrieval when we want to use it and uh, and also effectiveness okay so that's in a simple way you know, we are arranging in systematic and orderly manner right so but we when you look at uh, organizations or ministries and teams and so on so we need to understand that um, oh by the way you know this um, you will be learning in detail in uh, church administration um i think that's come next semester i think church administration so um, so you'll be leaning i mean l- uh, uh, learning this a little bit more in detail in depth of all these aspects right so anyway so we we know that every ministry has spiritual aspect of it okay and it also has organizational aspect of it right so spiritual aspect meaning when it comes to ministry what are some spiritual aspects or spiritual responsibilities let's say church for example what is the spiritual aspect of a church so yeah so so when you say uh, you know evangelism discipleship uh, you know prayer spiritual growth maturity you know so those are the spiritual uh, aspects or spiritual responsibilities of the church right seeking god pursuing god worship prayer everything okay so that's a big part of it 
but also we should understand that the you know ministry and church and you know it has a organizational aspect of it okay so what does that mean that means like okay let's say we just take a church for example maybe church building right uh, maybe you're renting it sorry uh, congregation members huh? number okay number hmm. yeah so so yeah maybe the not growing or not yeah so if the if the if the congregation comes in for worship you know you've invited so where are they going to gather how many are there where are they going to you know gather and uh, you know is it a building is it something that you're renting something that you're buying right so all this is the organizational side of things you know uh, and if it's a building has the rent been paid is there electricity is there water like simple example uh, we went to uh, we went to kalyan last year okay now it was it was raining and uh, uh, the previous day the the day of the meeting also and on sunday we went on sa saturday so saturday's meeting it was it was fine sunday um because of the rain there was some electrical you know disruption uh, power uh, disrupted connection was gone so the whole day there was no power okay the whole day and you can Im imagine mumbai after rains moist you know the humidity heat everything whole day there was no power and so uh, we had the evening i mean so we had the sunday morning service everything but we actually planned for a worship uh, worship team training okay worship team workshop in the second half post lunch now the thing is the water could not be pumped there's no power water could not be pumped so there's no water in the overhead tanks no water in the taps no water in the toilet right so and we are actually asked for uh, there was about 50 or 45 to 50 odd people i think who were willing to come be part of the you know workshop and all that finally we had to cancel it because uh, the, the the thing said that there won't be any power for the rest of the day you know we couldn't. so we see that the organizational side is important right is uh, uh, or we would say that that influences the spiritual side of it impacts the spiritual side of it right the spiritual side obviously very important that also impacts the organizational side of it the processes the systems and everything so both go hand in hand the mistake we could make is emphasize only the spiritual leave out the organizational there'll be utter chaos okay we're having a full day meeting we're having lunch who's in charge i don't know what time will it come we don't know where are i going to you know serve the food we'll somehow manage somewhere here here there where are people going to wash their hands i i so that's going to be chaotic right uh, and people will be hungry and the second half of it is going to be a problem right on time delays all those things happen so these go hand in hand okay we need to understand that right so emphasizing the organizational part and leaving the spiritual aspect of it again that results in chaos and you know, everything is very well done systems process you know organized but something is empty on the inside because the spiritual aspect is not given an importance okay okay so when we look at the organizational side of things okay so uh, four broad areas where we can organize you know organize the church or ministry organize the people right because we know that ministry church everything is about people organizing our schedule right how we spend our time organizing our finances how we spend our money okay so organizing church or ministry uh, will always help us to function better to minister be better okay and uh, it's on the basis of the people whom we are ministering to okay so when we look at a church or ministry um, okay who are the people that we are reaching with our ministry okay what is it that we are doing in our ministry and who are the people whom we are reaching okay so if you look at a church typically you know church is involved in evangelism so there are people outside the church that we are ministering to right 
so which means that we need to organize that aspect of it or that ministry evangelism reaching out maybe it is reaching out people not in the city but beyond the city other cities or you know so we call that missions extending beyond our geographical location right missions so that can be one area of ministry which needs to be organized and also it it would also mean you know building people who are part of the church right discipleship uh, spiritual growth fellowship and so on so so based on that we can actually broadly you know organize our ministries right so you have these things so if we focus okay what are these ministries within the church list them up and what should we do how should we do, do it what are the ministries which are you know uh, we are reaching people outside the church so based on the people whom we are serving the who, people whom we are reaching we organize our church and ministry okay second thing we said organizing the people okay so um people who are involved in serving leading etc you know so how do we organize the people in the ministry okay so the best thing is to see okay if there is a ministry area or overseeing a ministry um effort to have leaders okay to have leaders for that particular ministry area it could be maybe you know just taking an example from you know our own church say okay let's say life group ministry right or we have a ministry like working professionals ministry right? so we have ministry leaders who will oversee that right so what is the advantage of that no yeah, sorry helpful in in overseeing in giving a direction to that ministry whatever efforts that needs to go into that ministry whatever planning that needs to go into it right so um, of course we will you know we will look at it much more in depth but when we have someone who is leading and let's say that person is trained that person has the vision that person is equipped gifted for that then you know you as a overseer of that entire church or ministry you are free to focus on other things and give whatever guidance is required right so the actual work so in doing that that person who's the leader is also fulfilling god's call on his or her life so as a as a pastor slash you know leader whatever we are actually facilitating them to fulfill god's call on their life right rather than doing everything ourselves we are actually making space for them to fulfill god's call see other things like being aligned to the vision being gifted in that area having a call you know having a heart for people all that you know needs to be looked into right but then this is what happens it, when we organize it rather than you know one person who is just running the whole thing we organize that okay this is the ministry area have you defined that ministry area right and having done that if you would give uh an appoint leader so ministry leaders so within the ministry there could be different teams right so making sure that okay hey, this is a function to un to you know you you recognize identify the ministry recognize and identify the function within that ministry okay so even in bible uh, you know bible college i'm sure that you okay bible college is a ministry but within the bible college there are certain functions or some certain processes that are happening okay one is we have okay class classes classes are happening what else accommodation, accommodation hostels what else is there for the students so uh, so the post classes there could be certain things right and uh, food is another outreaches right so this is one thing and then if you look at the you know bible college overall if you see uh, the whole process of administration 
overall thing and also admissions which admissions is part of it um you know there's so many different uh, maintenance of the physical maintenance of the venue right um so there are different functions within that overall ministry so which means these functions uh if it is big enough if it is going to require time and effort these need to have a leader you can say a team leader or you know uh, somebody who is actually doing it uh, he needs to look after that so so when we all, when we set up things and i'm sure like in, in if you're serving in a church or if you're overseeing a church you know you've, you've had that experience you know, just for us to know that okay this function needs a leader right it is an important function and without the leader it, that function is going to suffer okay so we have that okay then of course there are others who can serve in different different areas different functional teams um but you know maybe they are they are volunteers they are serving now volunteers can be in all this you know ministry leaders team leaders they can be volunteers as well right okay then so we looked at organizing the church or ministry organizing people organizing our time okay which is our scheduling our time okay so we need to know that time is a resource okay um when we say resource uh i'm sure we understand you know the first thing that comes to our mind is money money is a resource something valuable something that we use something that is necessary we need to understand that people are also a resource right people are valuable people are a resource and that's why we call it you know human resource department or human resource manager or you know so human resource so human people are resource resources the third thing is that time is also a resource right because time is uh, something valuable and it's in fact it is something that cannot be you know uh, once you one times once time goes by you cannot renew it right so so that's the thing you can't really say okay i want to add some more hours to the day or some more days to the month right it's a non renewable resource right like they say you know so uh, so it's good to organize so that we use our time well okay um, so yeah um so you could have calendars right so you can have a annual calendar where you can plan things for the entire year right or a, and also a monthly calendar where you can plan for that month right so how many sundays are there in a year 52 52 and uh, i don't know if it's a leap year i don't know if you can have one more anyway 52 sundays typically and uh, you know if you talking about a church ministry 52 sundays 52 times to minister and you might have some additional services like let's say easter sunday or oh, sorry good friday uh, christmas new year or this may or may not fall on a uh, uh, good friday definitely on a, not on a sunday so um, so these are things that so so you can plan ahead you, know, you have an annual calendar and you plan okay what is going to happen on these days right so um in uh, in, in apc this calendar annual calendar actually starts getting formed by october of the year for the next year right so october 2023 is when all this planning happens uh, so that by january uh, we know okay this is these are the dates for some of those main things like conferences um other things okay so um have you seen any of those uh, calendars anyone no no you've seen where we've seen yeah yeah so please check right so it's it's there on the website if you go to um uh let me let me just share that and then probably we can end um, okay so if you go to 
APC website, events, church calendar. Okay. So let me just share that tab. Okay. Is it there? Can you see it on the screen? Okay. Yeah, so um, so it's if you see it's February, March, the whole year. And so it uh, has some of these main events regarding the youth. So if you see this coming Sunday, there is the youth meeting happening at APC South. There is also the water baptism service that's happening, APC Central, right? And so on. So these main events, these worship team shoots, many weekend schools, everything is entered there. So the dates are mentioned uh, there. So, uh, so that way, the entire schedule for the year is there. Now, uh, there is scope for change, right? In case certain things need to be changed, um, certain things are maybe cancelled. You know, all that is there. But then, you know, it is planned and kept. So that um, you know everybody is aware of it, right? So what happens is uh, when we need to announce it to the church, uh, the media team just goes with it. They look at the calendar, they prepare whatever announcements, and they go with it, right? If you see, it also has the pulpit calendar. Okay, um, so I'm sharing that. So the pulpit calendar is uh, mainly for the month. Okay. So it talks about what are the church locations, who is sharing where. Um, okay, if you if you see that it's uh, who's sharing where, uh, and also it talks about what are the messages. Right? If I'm just rolling the cursor over, you know, the power of the tongue, second Sunday the power of the spoken word, third Sunday faith speaks. Fourth Sunday healed by his stripes, right? And then these are the people who are speaking at uh, different locations and so on. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so this is uh, one way of scheduling for the year or the, for the month um, uh, how we can organize the time, um, uh, organize the schedule of the ministry, right? So, this is useful and uh, quite effective. Okay, so we'll stop here. And catch up next week. Okay.